always. Dr. Cordelino? Here. Mr. Daughtry? Here. Mrs. Fano? Here. Mr. Graff? Here. Mr. Palma? Here. Mr. Petrandino? Here. Mr. Rappaport? Here. Ms. Zuckerman? Here. Dr. McGrath? Here. Ms. Fiala? Here. Mr. Sun? Here. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provision of the Act, the Montville Township Board of Education provided a public notice of this meeting, which included the time, date, and location that was posted at the Montville Township Municipal Building, all Montville Public Schools, the Montville Public Library, the Montville Township Board of Education Administrative Office Building, the district website, and advertised in the daily record and the Montville tap into it, the official board of the newspapers of the board on January 28, 2024. Yeah, so we're just going to start off with some stuff that happened in the recent past. So, starting off on Friday, May 24th, the seniors had their senior breakfast at the mansion at Mountain Lakes, and all the seniors had a great time eating breakfast and watching the hypnosis show. And then also on Thursday, May 30th, the seniors had their prom at the Grove, and the night was filled with fun and lifetime for the members. And then the next day, on May 31st, the winners of the Research in Molecular, Molecular Biology Poster Symposium were announced. And students Vicky Tan, Eva Nimron, and Yuren Karakaya went on to represent NTHS at Rutgers University's Poster Symposium on June 4th. Then we also had the second <laughs> annual Mongo Varsity Hockey Formal Tournament, which took place on Saturday, June 8th. The tournament raised a lot of money for our high school's hockey team. Then on Monday, June 10th, the seniors participated in the annual NHS fundraiser by placing their handprint in the stairwell off the rotunda. These handprints will be a constant reminder of our students who graduated in just two days. Also on June 10th, the senior class officers worked with administration to hold the first senior sunset in the interview. This event offered the students a chance to socialize, play backyard lawn games, and bond as a class. And then at 8.30 p.m., the class officers showed the premiere of a montage they have been working on for several months, featuring a compilation of videos and pictures of the class of 2024 since their earliest days in Mongol Township Public Schools. And also, an extra special thank you to Christina Rinkowski for all of her hard work in putting together the video. Then we had senior awards, which were presented on the night of June 12th. Our seniors received many local and state scholarships and awards as a testament to their four years of hard work and dedication. And then we also had the senior picnic, which was last Thursday, June 13th. Students received their yearbooks, walked out to the community center in the fields, played games, and enjoyed food from various centers. So baseball editors, season record 15 and 14. They have upsets, barbells, and unfortunately lost to my Essex while putting up a fight. Boys tennis ended with a record of 6 and 15, losing to Riverdale in the state tournament. Uh, softball also upset Old Japan for the Morris Hills in the state tournament, and they ended their season six, 10 and 16. The boys golf team ended 11 and 6, the girls ended 8 and 1, as well as being conference champions. Boys and girls finished their season with a solid 9 and 9 record, but the girls team finished 9 and 11. And finally, the two MTHF, two MTHF athletes
the doors the last day of school is this Thursday, June 20th, and graduation will be at 7 p.m. where DHS will send off the class to the people. Thank you very much. It sounds like a lot's going on. Hey, do you mind if I add something to the Sure. Just want to especially congratulate Ethan and Ryan, uh, recipients of multiple awards at the Senior Awards Night. And Ryan is the class, senior class's valedictorian. And board members were there as well. They actually had some. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it's great to uh, Yeah, usually I wait for the. Uh, after all the awards, but we have so many good things I want to uh, announce while I have an audience here. So, one, I just want to start with the uh, district goals. Uh, we have four district goals and 14 different action plans underneath that. We are addressing mental health this year, uh, exploring ways to evaluate and innovate learning opportunities, uh, security protocols, as well as long range facility plans and other things. So, we accomplished all 14 of those action plans under those four goals. The board has all the information about that, so I uh, just want to report that out. And we'll be working on our future goals at the end of this meeting. Also, we just were recognized. Um, uh, we were just recognized for the ninth year in a row for Montville Township Public Schools receiving the best communities for music education from the National Association of Music Merchandisers. This foundation is designed and awarded by the name of NAMF. Foundation to districts that demonstrate outstanding achievement in efforts to provide music access and education to all students. The PCME Award recognizes the commitment of teachers, students, and administrators, Board of Education members, and parents who believe in the value of music education and are working to assure that it is part of a complete education for their children. So, nine years in a row, that's quite outstanding. It's a great job on that. We have uh, something that's unusual, and it's just something that in particular we have to note. There's a bus driver in town who's been working, currently works for uh, the Dow Bus Company. And Ms. Sheila Francisco has been working for 56 years as a bus driver in town. And she's probably driven many of you around uh, throughout your years. She'll be completing her last bus run this Thursday at 11.30. So the police are going to be giving her a bus escort from Odell Bus Company up to the high school, and then she'll do a final run, 56 years. So we wish her well in retirement. Uh, incredible run, incredible. Uh, tonight on the agenda, we also have the supervisor's uh, contract. So I want to thank Mr. Fleischman and Mr. Tubbs, along with the Board of Education uh, Committee that was working on that. So that will be up for our vote tonight. And, uh, a lot of work went into that, we're very happy. That's being brought to a conclusion. As well as the MTDA, they have a tentative agreement with the board and they're working on some final things right there. So I want to thank Mr. Riato for all his work along with this whole committee, along with the board subcommittee that worked on that. So that's a lot of work and a lot of hours going into that. So uh, exciting news is there as well. And then, of course, we're celebrating all the retirees and our students and, all, and the ShopRite stars. So tonight's a wonderful night of all the wonderful achievements that we're. You know, they come to fruition after four years and even this one year um, coming all together. So we're really happy about that. And that's not important. Uh, do you want to give any business report first before we get all the awards? No report. That is easy. Okay. So then we'll uh, go to shop. Go to the desk. Okay. Good evening. I am thrilled to present our shot at the start of the 2023 2024 school year. It's going to start, and I'm going to go back to members of our faculty categories and the members who are selected by the administrative committee. In addition to the recognition of one of the students, say I shot at the only school year's $1,000 in the class of 2024, we join the graduating each of our stars this evening. In the field of academics, congratulations to Henry Silver. Incredibly gifted, dedicated, and accomplished student who has proudly maintained a 4.1 plus GPA for the past three years. And has a passion for learning and has demonstrated academic growth by taking an increasingly challenging course of each year of her career, only in her senior year when she took the 
pushes the blow for a song. Despite the group of animals on track to pass each of those gaping classes this year in May, the teachers attribute this to hard work, dedication, and enthusiasm. Unsurprisingly, Hannah also excels in the multitude of activities serving as the vice president of the Shrine of the Music Honor Society, the inductee of the Italian Honor Society, the National Honor Society, the marching band, the brass captain, and an active member of the Muse, Chamber, Jazz, and Symbolic Bands. Just like she did in academic and musical pursuits, Hannah committed herself fully to ensure that she was accepted into the College of her dreams. Specifically, for the past two months, Hannah has attended live interviews and auditions for also balanced and friends of jazz. Hannah's effort and dedication is particularly rewarding this acceptance since it's all seven of the schools that she applied to, including the one that she wants to attend, NYU. The highly competitive programs which Hannah will attend hosts 110 applicants for audition. Hannah is one of only 15 to receive acceptance. In the fall, Hannah will attend the Simon School of Cultural Education and Human Development at New York University and Senior Computers and Composition. Again, congratulations. Congratulations to James Conner. <laughs> Don't see him here, but uh, staff members who have observed his talent, leadership, and dedication have literally arrived in thousands of athletes, but are arguing that Jimmy is one of the hardest working students they have ever encountered. Jimmy is the kind of athlete who gets to practice for a weight room or a team for anyone else and leaves after other groups. Because of his positive Positive attitude, leadership abilities, and overall character, Jimmy is with peers of all other students. In terms of individual achievement, Jimmy was the boys of cross seat captain during his past season, won second team, in Jack, and ready for defense, and won 50 round balls this year. But Jimmy is much more proud of the accolades that he has his entire team, some of which he was injured. For example, his coach says Jimmy's energy sparks the excitement of the entire team, and he is always in a positive influence on the other players who are on the ball. As a two-sport varsity athlete in Boston football, Jimmy also works hard off the floor to maintain the grades. For example, this year, Jimmy works likely at the with A averages in each of his classes, including two lab sciences. The lab sciences that he said. When I met with Jimmy to show the group the good news he won this award, he said that he wanted to be known as a good team, a good athlete, and most importantly, a good son. I think that we can all agree that Jimmy achieves those goals on the In the fall, Jimmy will attend Fairly Dickens University. To major in criminology, and is also committed to continuing to the cross community at Army College Street. Again, congratulations to Jim. In the field of the arts, congratulations to Emily C. Kanasi. For the past four years, Emily C. has been featured on numerous works lists for various work projects, and her work has been highly displayed. In cases and spreading words around the town. And Lisa is recognized for being one of the few students to take multiple art classes each year of her high school career, including photo studio and uh, last year, the art this year, both of which are, are the most advanced courses offered with respect to artists. And Lisa's accomplishments also include maintaining a 4.1 question yet, and being an active member of the yearbook class, sending for the position of senior program to achieve. And Lisa has been a dedicated member of the competition dance team for the past 12 years, excelling in all styles of events. Her commitment extends beyond performing. She has also served as a student teacher throughout the world high school, assisting multiple teachers each week to gain valuable experience in both classroom interview and team collaboration. Over the years, Lisa has worked with dancers aged 2 to 13, nurturing and compassion for dancing and teaching. If Anna Lisa's passion for teaching uh, others can trace to schools, it is likely that both her parents, Dr. Kirk Kowalski and Ms. Jennifer Kowalski, are two of the outstanding educators on the privilege to work with OTHS each day. For most of the past 12 years, Kirk and Jen have proudly shared stories, pictures, and updates from countless hours they spend watching Anna Lisa do the thing she loves most, dance. For the next 12 years, you better leave it for that I look forward to new stories, pictures, and updates. And then the current gen members, watching both of their girls continue to grow into talented and successful women. In the fall, I'm recently accepted the Doctor of Physical Therapy program at the City of 
Bitcoin, which is also offered to all the universities in the state. And congratulations on this. In the field of human research, congratulations to Sahidi Kovacher. Sahidi is a passionate and dedicated student who is recognized most for her impactful contributions to Kiba. As a member of Kiba, Sahidi demonstrated strong leadership practices to help plan and organize fundraisers to help members of all of the community. One such fundraiser is quite possibly the biggest one of the first three participants in. Uh, it's also one of the key couple that has this feature of Wednesday the Food Drive. In order for the fundraiser to be successful, so he can help advisors to collaborate and develop plans to provide officers to develop their responsibilities, and then mobilize teachers and students to bring food for families in need. In total, an incredible 2,300 food items were generated, stored, organized, prepared, and packaged for delivery to 41 families in Africa. Sahidi's efforts also meant that the Montreal Food Pantry received a large ship of food items to be placed immediately on shelves, just prior to the holiday season. Additionally, because of the success of this year's food drive, he helped organize the Christmas food drive for the very first time, and delivered items to seven more families. Sahidi's fundraising efforts also have an impact beyond our community. She's especially proud of the work, uh, the work that she uh, has done to help charities such as Population Smart. Despite the many hours that she dedicates to helping others, he was tremendously successful in classes and is maintained for the college and last year. In the fall, so he will attend Rutgers University and major in human and social parenting, and he will continue helping people in the world's congratulations. In the field of leadership, congratulations to Paul Fortunato. Carly has many qualities needed for good leaders to become great. She is intelligent, selfless, empathetic, hard working, and determined. As a demonstration of her leadership in the classroom, Carly has made a full function question today while being highly successful in some of our most challenging courses, including microbiology, research in molecular biology, and EAP. As a demonstration of selflessness, Carly is a student ambassador and assists new students transition to MCHS. In this capacity, Carly has helped organize and participate in several important events, including new student orientation and peer mentoring. As a demonstration of her empathy, Carly volunteers a pathway where she has helped to help teach communication skills for students with disabilities. Carly also volunteers a time to represent the now present in the hospital and the hospital. And interestingly, none of the field also has more participation in the Global Health News Conference, General Conference. As a demonstration of the work, Carly has been a leader on the shooting team since freshman year. Through the Montreal Competition Center, Carly is the head coach for seventh and fourth graders, choreographing the ISIS shooting teams and promoting positive and responsibility. As a demonstration of her determination, Carly ran for an SNC leadership position two years ago in August. Carly responded with grace, always and showing the honor of years. She offered assistance to SAC and the elected officials, elected officers, to ensure the future post-school events such as public hours and homecoming events were still highly successful. MCHS was a better place for the past few years because of Carly's classic attitude and its nature. In the fall, Carly will attend the Great Force University to major in psychology and completing that track, to learn the evaluations of Carly, who's all of our favorite and computer shadow stars, as well as all the previous stars this year.
Her hard work and determination in providing the best quality of education for our students led her to create and design our Living Lessons program, a tradition at Lazar that has made an impact on so many lives. It is with immense gratitude, admiration, and guess a little sorrow that I must formally recognize and officially your official retirement and thank you that all you have done for our school and our community to make it a better place. Your ability to connect with students, understand their needs, and encourage their growth has earned you the respect and admiration of your students and colleagues. You have created a classroom environment whereby student, everyone, all students, be valued, supported, motivated, to achieve their best. Your legacy will live on in the collective success of the achievements of the thousands of young minds you Your students came to me and wanted to share with you. So I did give them a few that I picked out. Um, she was very inspiring due to her perseverance to make the school a better place for everyone. This is all from here. I'm two of you. She has made a major impact on our school from the color wars to the way less than she was. She made this school more inclusive to everyone who walks through the halls. Many students and teachers <coughs> look up to her as a role model. She teaches us the importance of life lessons every single day. And she was six and seven. She was an excellent teacher who was forever remembered at Bazaar. She treats every kid like family and shows her love for each and every one of us. She has touched so many hearts and changed people to be more inclusive in our school. And this is my favorite. Every single one of her lectures and speeches have important messages that should be spread worldwide. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I think they, I, I to they might have you on a speaking. But if she's not going to that, Look, the list, the list of compliments goes on and on, and I can, I can stay there. It is clear to your colleagues and your students that we are very sorry to see you. But we are so excited for you to experience the joy of retirement and a new life you and your family will enjoy. As you embark on this new chapter of your life, we wish you all the joy, health, and fulfillment in the years to come. May you find as much happiness in your retirement as you brought to the lives of your students and colleagues. You will be greatly missed you. Your legacy will live on in the hearts and in the minds of those who have touched and inspired. Thank you. Congratulations. And model. <laughs> Sanford, as the principal. Standing next to me is Mr. James Queen, uh, a member of our science department. Um, I'm going to some prepared words first and then talk more uh, off the cuff and from the heart. Um, Jim is a former Princeton University Distinguished Secondary School Teacher Award recipient at high school. Uh, he started teaching in 1997 at St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg High School in Florida as a chemistry, physical science, and earth science teacher. There, he also coached JV football and girls track. He stepped away from education for a few years before getting back into the teaching profession in 2004 in Massachusetts, moving to New Jersey, where he started teaching at Randall Indian Hills High School. He was there for six years. Hopefully, I got the numbers and dates all spot on. Uh, in 2014, about 10 years ago, and Jim heard me say this countless times, but I'm going to say it in this form too. 
he was hired in October 2014, and I've said it in public settings, best mid-season pickup ever, best free agent ever. Um, really landed in the high school, couldn't have come at a better time, and made an instant impact in various different courses and co-curricular activities, and had a terrific impression and influence on all his colleagues. He's coached, he's advised uh, different clubs at school, he's been a mentor to other teachers, Students rave about taking his different science classes. Um, and I know when I, I can speak for Dr. Schwartz when I say this, um, we rely on Jim Keen for so many different things. Um, he's really become a pillar of our science department, which we're very proud of. We consider him one of our strongest departments at the high school. Um, and most much of that is due to the solid foundation, the rock solidness of his James, James Queen in terms of supporting our students as well as uh, supporting his colleagues. Um, Jim and I have had conversations over the past few years uh, talking about the most important things in life. I know that he's stepping away from education after almost a quarter century in education to really uh, dedicate time to the most important things in life. Um, and I have to brag for a second. You know, if he looks like he's in incredible shape, it's because he is. Uh, him and his wife, he told me just the other day they biked 28 miles from Frenchtown to Lambertville and back, from Frenchtown to New Hope and back. I mean, anybody knows the canals on the Delaware River, you know, it's not an easy or short ride. Um, but apparently, Mr. and Mrs. Queen make it easy. Um, high school's going to be at a loss uh, starting next year because we're losing one of the pillars of our school. Um, I say that you know, from the heart, I mean it sincerely. Um, I've always valued the conversations I've had with Jim. I know so many other people. Have, um, yeah, Marvel will be the same. So, Because time and time again, every time we talk to 
other seasoned teachers in the science department and throughout the school, or novice teachers, you know, people who are new to the profession. All they would say were words that sounded like, I want to be like Tammy Bumgarner in the classroom. I want to have her dedication. I want to have her care for students. I want to have her organization, her ability, her knowledge, her pedagogical skill. Um, that's what you heard over and over again in the science department and around the school. And I think that came across when it was her colleagues that she was her teacher of the year. Kay left us midway through the year um, to move on to some things uh, that were going on uh, in personal life. Similar to Mr. Jim Queen, it was a huge loss to the science department. You know, starting in September, we'll have a very different science department, a strong science department. It won't be the same without Ms. Kay Bumbo there. I can say that on behalf of the students who have had her. Um, I can say that on behalf of the colleagues who have worked with her. Um, there's definitely a, a, a missing presence big shoes to fill, um, but we do wish her the best of luck in her retirement. You know, we thank her so much for her years of service. It's really made a huge impact on the school that will last many years to come. So best of luck and congratulations. Thank you very much.
and strive to learn the proper etiquette of serving on his board. And whereas he has demonstrated a commitment to advancing the education of all students without neglecting his own responsibility to strive for success in the classroom, now therefore be it resolved that the Mako Township Board of Education recognizes Brian Sun's dedication and commitment to advancing the education opportunity and open communication between the board, district administrators, and the student body. And be it further resolved that the members of the Mako Township Board of Education extend their sincere appreciation to Brian Sun for his dedication, uh, for his dedicated service on the Mako Township Board of Education, and be it further resolved that the members of the Mako Township Board of Education extend their best wishes to Brian and all of his future endeavors.
ones, little one. Plural? Singular? Uh, sometimes I have two. I, I have four all together. Normally I only have two of them here. Oh my, goodness. <laughs> my big girls usually stay home and like shower and stuff like that. God I bless. I had no idea. Yeah. Wow, that's tremendous. <laughs> More power to you. You do that. That's great. I'm like, I, left all, I left all four of them home with my husband and I thought, you're going to play on vacation right now. Your mom will go ahead and start it again. Our audience is in considerably, but we're still here. So, No other items from the same Okay. Um, there is good news in the agenda. I encourage people to read it. It's always cool. Lots of fun and interesting things, and it's amazing with all the really high quality students we have in our district. We're going to get to committee reports. Start with finance. Karen? Uh, thanks,
uh, before uh, school ended, uh, before school ends. And, um, so I wish the NTEA a happy, safe, and restful summer. In particular, the NTEA negotiating committee who worked very hard to reach the agreement. And next time we're going to try to get out about three. Yeah. <laughs> <The PM. laughs> I did. You did, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, and we have contracts for the other two bargaining units. Yeah. Is that the settle with the administrators, as you know, I think they're all ready now. They've been approved. They'll be getting their raises the contract and signed by everybody. And the supervisors, though Joe was the chairman, I would like to thank them for sharing it. We do have a memorandum of agreement, and I understand they have signed the contract also. Is that right? So, therefore, we'll set it in for July 1st also. Excellent. I want to thank Joe for on that also. Okay, thank you, Joe. Okay, any other? Just uh, thank everyone on the committee as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it, negotiations are not easy, as you all know, they're not. They're not a joy, but they are a necessity, and we do have a great deal of respect for our staff, our teachers, and I think they respect us, and so we know that we're doing a job, an important job, and so we get it done. Okay, public participation. Anything on the agenda? If you had any comments for anything on the agenda, any questions, please come to the microphone and tell us your name and Seeing none, I would ask for a consent resolution on items I through N. So moved. Second. Okay. Any questions on the minutes? Section J, questions? Just one comment on J with the calendars. Uh, just two quick revisions. We have uh, for the 24 25 calendar, we had to move one of the half days on June 17th and put it on May 23rd. Uh, we just didn't update that uh, earlier. And for the 25 26 calendar year, we just did not include the half day before Thanksgiving. Those are the only two changes. Okay, so we, so parents should be made aware of that. Okay, item uh, K, finance and facilities. Any questions on any of those items? Okay. Uh, Personnel, item L. Any questions? And then lastly, or no, I'll say that. Uh, curriculum, section M. And then lastly, anything in policy, nothing in policy. So, any questions? Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Graham. Yes, on everything except that I stand on the same on the list. Mr. Daughtry. Yes, and everything extended on Section K, check E490. Dr. Cordelina? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Fanna? Yes. Mr. Palma? I'm staying on Section I, yes, and everything else. Mr. Petrosina? Yes. Mr. Rappaport? Abstain and one row two. Yes, everybody else. Ms. Zuckerman? Yes. Dr. Moger? Yes. Okay, uh, is there any, are there any old business items people have? No, no, no old business? I think so. Okay, section R, general board comments and new business. Um, Mom will take care of the board and district goals real quick. Um, yeah, we'll do it, yeah, we can just do it first, it's easier. Uh, okay, so these are the same goals that we had last year, and we're just going to continue them going forward. We've done a lot of progress on these goals, and as we said last time, that we just keep on changing the action plan and, uh, underneath them. So each one of these would have, say, two or four different action plans underneath each one of these goals. And we're continuing to make progress over the years. So I would like to keep them the same as we move forward. Okay. Um, I'll just reiterate that. First one is implement, enhance, and evaluate ways to address mental health. Uh, the second one is explore and evaluate innovative learning opportunities for all students. 
The third one is continue to evaluate the safety and security protocols of the district. And the fourth one is monitor the completion of the current construction projects and evaluate the district's facilities and update the long-range facility plan. Does anybody have any comments on the district goals? Any comments from the board members on the district goals? Right, so, uh, well, you can go Yeah, you can just, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, then why don't we hold off on a vote on those and put them in with the board goals? Now, we had a dozen board goals that were suggested to the board. Uh, I asked for your comments and what you thought were the top board goals. I narrowed it down to the top five. And from here, I'd like to take the top three, if that's possible. Okay, so the first one, and we'll take comments after each goal. First one was revise the district administration um, to enable the, yeah, provide support to the district administration to enable a successful completion of the construction aspects of facilities across the district. This is the same as last year. Does anybody have a comment on that goal? No comments. Okay. The second one was to increase communication with the community to ensure transparency and continued collaboration. Anybody have any comments on that one? The third one was to establish a process to measure school wellness and find and use the data to inform practice to create positive growth, engage students, and a healthy sense of belonging within the district. Anybody have any comments on that one? Okay, the fourth one was to attract, develop, and retain excellent quality staff with a focus on relevant professional development through mindfulness and cultural responsiveness and 21st century teaching strategies. You have a comment? I do. Okay. Um, I love this one except um, the cultural responsiveness. Responsive. Um, I feel like we do such an outstanding job from when the kids are young to they get older. Um, I feel as though I, I want to hire, or I want our, our administrators to hire the best and brightest, but not concern themselves with certain things. I see it in other school districts where someone will hire based on cultural um, responsiveness and then Halloween is taken away. <laughs> So I, I just want the best, and I also feel like it can put more pressure on our teachers that may, they don't need, um, and that it's not required. So that, just that one section, I would ask. So, so you just want to stop the professional development for a period? Correct. So what would it read like? So it would then read, uh, will attract, develop, and retain excellent quality staff with a focus on development that's wonderful. That's perfect. Is that anybody that? That's four. That's number four. Does anybody have a comment on that as well? Uh, I, I think I sent my comments earlier. Uh, here's the microphone. Yeah, so I'm okay with that, but I would even say stop it sooner than that. Stop it at uh, the Board of Education will track, develop, and retain excellent quality staff. Period. Um, I recommend dropping this one. It's a great one. 
able to have, but the way it's written, it said, it says it's a subtraction of all these stats, and that's more of the job of a foreman and his staff. And we're just overseeing. We're not advertising, we're not hiring any of these people. And the other goal is speak more to what we as a board can do and how the district can work. Um, I think for attracting to all the staff, we're, we're just supporting Dr. Warren, making sure that he has everything he needs to hire the right staff that we need. Um, so I think in that respect, I would recommend putting this one and go with the first group's part. But I know you have nowhere to go. That, that's, the, that's the fourth option. Um, I mean, I actually think it's confusing the way it's worded because you can interpret the mindfulness and cultural responsiveness as being in how you're hiring versus how you're. I, I agree with Karen that we need um, you know, teachers to be aware of, of our diversity and mindfulness and everything going on today. But I think the way it's supporting can lead to a lot of different interpretations, which probably doesn't serve the goal well in the end. I would just drop it. I think two and four are the tension being worked and then spread at the left and side of what I see in both of us. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree on dropping goal number four. But again, we're going to vote on our top three. So let me just read the fifth goal and we'll take a vote on which ones we think are most important. Okay. So the fifth one is promote a collaborative teaching, learning, an assessment environment that inspires creativity, innovation, and differentiation to support all learners. Does anybody have a comment on that? No. Well, it looks, from the comments that everyone just gave us, it looks like goal number four is probably off the table. Okay, so let me just ask, um, let me just go through the list. Beginning with goal number one, I'm going to ask, you're going to get three votes. Top, give me your top three votes, okay? I take the goal four goal. You want four goals? Uh, I don't know which one. Maybe you can have your seven. Sure. Who wants four goals? Give me a hand. Four goals. Four goals. How about we drop number four? That's it. There we go. We're done. Congratulations. You have your goals. Now we have to have a vote on the goals. So we have this one. This has a number two. I mean, what can we do? We can run out of it. I think we've got great communication as it is. Well, there, are, there is an action plan underneath, and so there would be items there for the administration to propose in order to improve communication with the district. With the, with the, so I, I think that's, that's a, a reasonable. Yes, look, I may think you're better, I just think that, I don't think that communication on that would be this problem, so I think, I don't think this, at least this is where I used to be, but just for the call, I think, uh, anything can improve. Okay, yes, in fact, what, since there is an objection, can we have a vote? Well, I would go well, outside of my comments, I think you do an excellent job communicating to the community, and we don't need to increase it, we can continue our grade. Uh, but not as not as that is to increase it. Not not as a goal. You don't want to see increased communication to the community. I think so much. I I I think, I think it's worthwhile. Just continue. Yeah, I think it's worthwhile just because communication is so challenging today. All of the different methods and social media and people rely on it in different ways and, and uh, approach it in different ways and um, you know, Sue does an amazing job, but I, I do think in today's times it's a worthwhile goal for us to keep our eyes on. Yeah, and I, I think that you know, the referendum not passing wasn't a result of poor communication, but in, perhaps in some uh, residents' minds, it, they didn't feel communicated to enough. That I've heard that from board members on the board um, that some people in the community felt that we didn't do enough communication. So there's a lesson to be learned there. And I would keep this one. I say we vote. I say we vote too. Does anyone, does anyone else have any other comments on that goal? I asked for comments earlier on the goal. I didn't get them, but we got them now. So
So I'd like to go ahead and just ask for a vote on this, okay? So. Just with the word change. Okay, with, with the word change from increase to continue. So the Board of Education will continue communication with the community to ensure transparency and continued collaboration. Yes. 
not a funding issue, but we'll have to look into the Well, that's what we resolved. Mr. Jackson already said that they were, it was cut from the budget, and that's the reason why. Well, let's find out the reason why he's trying to go against it and try to make this happen. This is a ledger for my son, Archie, and he would love to do it. We would all love to do it. And if we can make it happen, that would be awesome. If there's anything that we can do on our end to help, let us know. We'll get to the bottom of the facts of it. Okay. We need to contact him. Yeah, I would love to have him. So, first of all, thank you for your support for the referendum. 
appreciate it. And it seems like you really understand the issues that uh, we're facing. So uh, over the summer, we always look at all the enrollments. We'll take a look at that. You know, we have kids moving in, kids moving out. So you don't want to make a decision too early uh, as that goes. But as we see over the next couple of weeks, what's going on with the enrollments, the board will then make a decision about if we have to split a class or do something like that. But uh, that might resolve the issue this year, but going forward, it's going to become more and more difficult. That is one of the reasons why we moved the special ed program over to Valley View to create some more space because it is going to be an issue. So uh, we are going to be looking at that in the next couple weeks, but we do hold off until the summertime to see what truly happens with all the movements. I, I don't want to split it yet because if I have five kids move out and five in the house, we have to figure that out. But we'll be looking at that and we'll make a decision and saying that's for all the parents. Um, and can you tell me, like, is there a, a different plan in place currently for that extra classroom? Or is uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I have to talk to the principal about that. Okay. But yeah, the board, and the board does have a limit, so we're right at that spot where the board limit is. And you are correct that the numbers were lower, and they are increasing a little bit across the board. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I believe the highest kindergarten class was 22 students, which was last year. This current right. year before that was 22 students, and now we're currently looking at 24 25. At 22, the teachers said there wasn't space for them in the desk. So I, I just, I, I honestly, I've been in that classroom with all the students there. I don't know where they are, but 25. Right. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do appreciate your concerns, and we are also very concerned about the space. The administration will work as hard as they should. Anyone else? Well, I, I just like to follow up on that. So I, I, I like to roll in. Are you saying that it's a possibility based on how things you know, happen over the summer that, that there could be a third class? Yeah, I mean, if you have to say you have like five more kids who have been, they also have the 50 something. You'd have to split that cloud. It just it'd just be too difficult, and then we'd have to really make some more decisions about how what the ripple effect is with the rest of the school. But, but if the numbers were to stay the way they are, and things shook out where there was a, a teacher and there was a classroom, is that a possibility or? Yeah. Well, then I so we have to look at the numbers, and then I have to come back to the board and say, you know what, we have a classroom, the numbers warrant it, and then we need another teacher, and then we have to start looking. Summer to hire so, so we do this every single summer. So we look at the numbers every summer and then we make a decision. The board then decides sometime in July or you know, early August if we have to, and then you give me the okay and then we make decisions. Whichever way it goes. Yeah. You know, June is the month where everyone seems to be there. Like all the houses flipped, and that's when we get our greatest influx, and then they have to register, they have to know that they're in town. And yeah, it's always July, August, and then you finalize everything, but it's hard to predict the future. Yeah. Right. When could a member of the public find out you know, when those decisions are made? Uh, well, 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 right. well, I mean, we would, again, we'll be looking at it, but it'll be late July when we're here. I got to see how the movement starts going. Uh, and as we see things trending, we'll have to make a decision, and I'll come back to the board. I'm saying this just by way of background because I was hearing some things happen with regard to March again. I'm not just trying to interject myself in the decision or anything like that. I'm saying it's just an answer to the present as to why things might have happened long before this present administration is in effect. Um, historically, I don't know if everybody remembers back in like 2010 when we had the massive budget cuts. What happened at that time was that the main budget was cut 50%. And the athletic budget is not cut, and the band parents were enraged. Now they were taking five thousand dollars to send the band to away games, and the band parents at that time had the philosophy of saying, "No, you're making us go to the away games, and why don't we take that five thousand dollars and put it back in our budget and forget about going to the away games?" And that was when the band stopped going to the away games. Um, at that time, I think there were a lot more competitions than they were. And at that time, it was kind of a win win for the band people because I think at that time, I don't know if it's the way it is now, but at that time, 
the general philosophy of people in Danbury on a Friday night, they probably have a competition the next day. And if they wanted to do anything on a Friday night, it wasn't going to be trekking to burn into the playing stands. It was going to be being on our own field to practice for our competition for tomorrow. So that was really the history of how it happened that the band stopped going to away games. Now, if that's if, if the thought process of the band is different now, I don't know, but that's something that if you work out with us, I'm just giving this to the line. Okay. Um, the administration will take care of that at the games where they may have you know, work with the parents and the band and all that. Um, seeing no other comments from the public, I'll close that section of the meeting. And I ask for a motion for adjournment. Motion for adjournment. Thank you so much. Second? Yes, second. Okay, good night, everyone. See you in July.